Today is the one-year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, a black man murdered by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Uh, it's uh, just off a chain of events which uh, well, had implications and effects around the world. We have seen, of course, the conviction of uh, murder for of Derek Chauvin, the police officer, in, in the last uh, matter of few weeks. Uh, but we also saw huge, huge, huge uh, protests. Peaceful, some of them, very much not peaceful, many others, uh, many riots on the streets, uh, some uh, taking place virtually, virtually nightly in some cities in America. We saw protests on the streets in the middle of the pandemic uh, lockdown last year here in the UK across the country. We've seen statues toppled. Uh, we've seen demands for not just defunding the police, but reforming the police, our criminal justice system, investigations into whether or not we have an institutionally racist country and the like. But a year on from uh, the death of George Floyd, has anything actually changed? Well, let's talk to Dr. Remy Adekoya. He's a lecturer in politics at York University and author of Biracial Britain, A Different Way of Looking at Race. Good morning to you, Remy. Morning, Julia. Has anything changed? And if so, has it changed for the better? Huh, that's a good question, really. I was thinking about that before coming on the programme. Um, some things have changed in the sense that the moral atmosphere definitely around race has changed. I'd say that people are more sensitized to the issue. Uh, definitely with regards to institutions and corporations, you can see a lot of them feel the need today to be seen, to be doing something about race. And now, of course, sometimes, you know, this comes across as a bit performative. I think some of these corporations and institutions don't really know what to do, but they want to be seen to be doing something. And that's, I guess, a step in a positive direction. On the negative side, there's, de there's definitely, I'd say, a little bit more polarization around race today. And some of the debate is definitely nasty, especially on social media. There's all sorts of slurs which are thrown around there completely unnecessary, you know, in this direction and in that direction. And so and so I'd say it's a mixed bag. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, I would agree with you on the mixed bag. I'm, I'm all for people, you know, tackling issues and where there is um, sort of, uh, you know, people are, are just simply not being able to get ahead because of their race and whether it's unconscious bias or outright open racism. We need to tackle both of those. Mm -hmm. But I do worry about the polarisation. I do worry that talking about race incessantly all the time in the context of somehow white people are bad people, black people are victims, and, and this and this sort of idea that somehow we can actually judge people purely on the colour of their skin as good or bad people, um, I think that is a very dangerous territory. And it seems to me a lot of these so-called anti-racists are actually stirring up more racism themselves and indeed often directing racism at white people. That's not a solution to the issues of, of people who are affected by, by racism in this country, surely. I definitely agree viewing the world through the lens of, uh, you know, us, them, we yeah. good, they bad narrative doesn't make sense and it's not really going to lead us anywhere. I completely agree with that. And so on, on that, I'd agree with you. I think what one thing we should do is that, you know, anti-racist activists, you know, are also a mixed bunch. And there's people who are very reasonable people here who are raising uh, legitimate issues and speaking in a reasonable way. And there's, of course, people who are not speaking in a reasonable way and who, you, as you say, are spewing hatred. And, and you know, obviously those, those kind of people listening to them is not going to take us anywhere. So I think it's also important to distinguish between various types of anti-racists. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, I, I, I don't often like the term anti-racist because it seems mm. to be now there's the argument to say you're either anti-racist, you're either with us or you are a racist. We've even had you know, black members of the government accused of, of well, I mean, some words, I mean, frankly, that, that would never pass my lips, right. clearly blatantly racist terms, because despite the fact that they have the commas, correct skin colour, they have the mm. wrong political views. So, for instance, uh, you know, if they support Brexit or they vote Conservative or, or is it particularly like a government minister, they are considered to be somehow traitors to the race. Now, that is a form of racism in itself. Uh, judging anybody on the basis of anything other than their own individual characteristics, as opposed to what they should apparently believe or say or think because of the colour of their skin. That's just racism. It's wrong and should be it's racist. Condemned. It should be condemned uh, categorically. And it's I think, racism. You know, anybody spewing out things like that. I mean, you know, it's difficult to... You you, know, why would you... Uh, do you not agree uh, that it's racism? I agree. It's completely horrible. But let me just... But you, you won't know, agree I, that I it's really racism. Know. No, listen, just listen, Julia. I'm not sure, you know, if a black person can be racist towards a black person or yes, if they. a white person can yes. be racist towards a white person. They can say stupid things that have no place in public debate and should be categorically condemned. I'm just not sure if the term racist 
in this particular context okay. is really useful. Exactly. Which doesn't mean I don't condemn it any less. Mm. It is horrible. It has no place in public debate. And nobody of any skin color, black, brown, white, or any, should be allowed to okay. say such things and just get away with it. I completely agree with that. Should we have allowed what happened in terms of the interaction between a police officer in Minnesota and a, and a black man uh, in Minnesota a year ago. Should we have allowed that to affect what happens here? All of the issues that we've got in terms of American race relations, their history of race in terms of slavery and the civil rights movement, we don't have any of that in terms of our... our that, that's not the, the basis of our race relations in this country. People weren't brought here as slaves. We've never had a situation where black people were banned from voting and having basic civil rights. Um, we, we do not also have an issue of widespread evidence of police brutality. And I, I've yet, I mean, yes, there are incidents, of course there are, but in terms of police officers in America committing um, murder or, or other acts of, of violence against black or white people in America and then not facing any charges, that is not a particular issue in this country. We don't have people being routinely shot on our streets by the police. Far from it. Only a couple of shots are ever fired a year by police officers in the streets. Um, and, I, and, and there is no evidence, actually, that, that black people are any more likely to be a victim of police violence than the white people. Should we have imported the anger about what happened to George Floyd to this country when so much of what happened there has very little to do with us in Britain? So two things I'll say, Julia. First of all, I think Britain is an incomparably more tolerant and better place to live in for a person of color than America is today. That's number one. Number two, however, if we talk about the protests which happened, I tend to analyze this in terms of how did the ethnic minorities in Britain react to those protests. And all the surveys which I've seen uh, on those protests show that there was broad support for those protests among ethnic minorities in Britain. So this means that ethnic minorities in Britain do think there is a problem with racism. Where people differ is in how to tackle it. And for instance, I tell you, this might be interesting for you, a majority of black respondents in a survey I saw were against toppling of the toppling of statues, for yes. instance. And so there isn't widespread support for those kinds of actions. But people do think, look, there is a problem out there and we need to tackle this somehow. The problem is, you know, with the somehow. What exactly do we need to do? How bad is it? That's where people differ. On this, there are very different opinions yeah. within the ethnic minority community. Uh, as there are in all communities, because of exactly course. people are individuals. Um, now, we've seen the horrific shooting in the head of the Black Lives Matter activist, Sasha Johnson. She's only 27-year-old, 77-year-old. She's got young children. Uh, she was apparently at a, at a party. It was in the street at three o'clock in the morning um, and was the victim of what it would appear, as evidence suggests right now, a drive-by shooting. She had been the target uh, of, uh, of death threats. Uh, the police believed that none of them were specifically credible. And it now does appear that she was, unfortunately, just in, in the line of sight of a of, of these these gunshots that, that, that were ringing out. Um, it, it, she's now fighting for her life. And um, it, it's an absolutely horrific case, uh, a, a young woman uh, you know, face, facing such a horrific crime. Diane Abbott, the former Shadow Home Secretary, she wrote a tweet yesterday. Black activist Sasha Johnson in hospital in critical condition after sustaining a gunshot wound to the head. Nobody should have to potentially pay for their life with their life because they stood up for racial justice. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Um, was that an appropriate tweet for a prominent black politician to send about a, a young woman who's been shot when we did not at that time know the circumstances and there was no specific information at the time to suggest that she had been shot because of her activism or because of her race. I'd say that was an absolutely irresponsible tweet. It's absolutely irresponsible for someone high profile like that to be insinuating that actually this could have been, you know, she could have been the victim of a racially inspired attack on her, knowing how how high passions are, knowing how polarized the society is, I think that was absolutely irresponsible, especially considering the fact there was no evidence to point in that direction. There's, there's no excusing that kind of tweet from someone that high profile, in my opinion. I mean, if a white politician had written something of the same kind, they would be accused of race baiting. Was this race baiting? Yes. Interesting. Dr. Remy uh, Adekoya, really appreciate you.